Yeah, how's that? That that, that should be uh that should be alright. Alright, let me uh get the GPS going. What? I thought I said that. About to get the GPS going because we got a load that's coming up out of here. What's going on guys? LOM community, what's up? Lockout men in the building. Yo, if you're new to this channel, yo, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe. Don't forget to share, comment, and hit that bell on the way out the door. Yes, sir. Uh, man, I am here at uh, McLean up here in Florida. And um, I'm about to uh, get ready to go. Get ready to go, man. I'm about to stop over here right quick and uh, freshen up. But uh, I'm, I'm just coming on to you guys today, man, right quick before I get up out of here. I may be the wrong person to ask this question. I guess, I guess it's because I'm really not that interested. I'm really not that interested in it. And what you guys want to know what I'm talking about, right? Y'all want to know? Well, in my email, uh, this was a while back. And I, I forgot who sent the email, so I'm very sorry uh, for not uh, getting to the email sooner. But let me explain, you, explain something to you guys right quick. Being that I'm always busy, of course, you know, I'm a truck driver, so I'm always busy. Being that I'm always busy, I, it, it's hard to get to some of you guys' comments, some of you guys' questions, some of you guys' statements. But believe you and me, I do read all the stuff that you guys sent me. See there, I could have, I could have posted up over there. So with that in mind, with that in mind, it, it does take a little bit of time for me to um, get to you guys. So I am so sorry about that. Let me paraphrase what happened to me last night right quick before I get into, uh, get into this topic. So last night I came to McLean. It was a midnight uh, delivery and I thought that when I got here, they was gonna, they was gonna, you know, unload me and kick me off the property, which, which in fact they didn't. They got me unloaded. Uh, actually, they got me unloaded very quickly, but I was still in the door, so I, I went to sleep. Dude, I woke up this morning at about seven o'clock. And they was like, yo, we been finished with you. You just now coming in here? Oh, come on, bro. See the blinkers, right? Uh, we was like, they was like, we was done with you. But man, when I got here last night, I am so glad that I came here when I did because the line of trucks that was lining up to get into that place last night, woo, woo. Man, it was crazy. It was crazy. So and that was a pretty good place. Usually they 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 you know come knock on your door and tell you to get the F up out of there because you can't 
you can't overnight there. All right, so let's get into this topic, man. Let's get into this topic. Um, one of my subscribers emailed me uh, a while back. And man, it's already 50 degrees down here in Florida. Lockout men. Yo, tell me in your opinion or your advice, is uh, owning a truck worth it? But look, man, uh, look, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I, 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 I might be the only, I, I might be one of the few people that's, that's might not be a good uh, person to ask or get any advices about owning a truck. Me personally, I, I don't have that aspiration of owning a truck. It's like every new jack that comes into this business, you know, sees dollar signs. And the only way to get those dollar signs is that you have to own the truck. Owning a truck is a business. It's a business, you know? So you gotta go through, you gotta go through setting up your, your LLC, your corporate, if, if your partners, uh, getting your solos, you got to get your EID number. You, you there's a lot of things that you got to go through when when you when you buy your truck. The ultimate goal, I guess, is to own the truck. You know, when you when you in this game, and I understand that, and I appreciate that, and I you know, and I am happy for anybody anybody that decides to go the owner op way uh, when getting the truck. But see, by me being the company driver for the last uh, last few years, I see the things that the company do for these trucks. And I, I don't think I want any parts of that. See, when the truck break down, all I have to do is just take it to the shop. What are you doing? Bro, what are you doing? What are you doing, bro? This, this guy right here. I mean, he couldn't he couldn't wait behind me. Anyway. Anyway, let me get let me get back at it. So I I see if if the truck breaks down, all I have to do is just take it to the shop. Ain't no money on my pocket. Tire changes and all this other stuff that comes with owning a truck. Anything happens to this truck, I call brakes down and, and let them know and they'll, they'll send me to whatever place to get the truck repaired. Good, I'm back on the road, bam. Owning, owning your own truck though, you know, with the exceptions of, of everything that I just mentioned, owning your truck does bring you freedom. It brings a lot of freedom. You don't have to be tied down to the company mentality of, of things when you're owning a truck. You can choose your own load. You can do whatever you want to do in your own truck and you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to be subjected to any other company's um, standards, I guess. I mean, you got to follow their rules though, but you know, but basically inside the truck, you you basically do what you want to do. Now there's there's multiple ways of going that route to owner operations. You know what I'm saying? Some people choose leasing. Now there's a lot of videos on YouTube that pretty much tells you about leasing. You know what I'm saying? Lease from a company, lease on to a company, uh, lease purchase, all that stuff. There's there's stuff on YouTube that you can catch and you can pretty much figure that out. But your question to me was, is it worth it? Well, if you're interested in it, and that's what you got your mindset on, then yeah, I guess, I guess, I guess it is worth it. I, I guess it is worth it, you know, I, I, you know. But it all depends on how serious you're going to take the industry and what your goals and expectations are. You want to run a business or you just want to just drive with the hopes of making more money doing lease or being an owner operator. 
See, that's where everybody gets into this game thinking that they can just make more money. Oh, well, I, I become an owner operator. I'm about to do, uh, I'm about to do six figures. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's possible to do six figures, but it's also possible to go broke, you know? I mean, what, what's the biggest thing? Let me know in the comments below if you guys are owner operators or anything like that, but what is the biggest expenses that you guys have as far as driving the truck. Let, let me break down the expenses right quick. And I'm sorry if this video is gonna be a little bit long. I'll, I'll try to cut it down. What's, what's the biggest thing that you guys uh, have to worry about when owning a truck? Fuel, right? Y'all want to get the cheapest fuel at the cheapest possible rate. You also, as, as a business owner, you gotta, you gotta do your finances way different than when you get your finances that if you was to still be a company driver. See me, my finances is different. All of it comes to me, I pay my bills and I do a little bit of savings and then I have some play money, boom. As an owner operator though, you all that money don't go in your pocket. You gotta understand that. All that money don't go in your pocket. See, I was an owner of three bit two businesses back in the day and I knew how to separate the the business money, my personal money, and then the money that I have for operations, I guess. When when you look at the payments that you guys get from from these companies, you got to realize that all that money don't go in your pocket. You got to you got to separate it. Now, depending on how much you want to pay yourself is is it is what it is, you know. The rest of it went back into the company to make the company better. And that's what you want to do because the ultimate goal is you want to probably get more than one truck. Maybe one day you don't want to, um, maybe one day you don't want to uh, drive no more. You want people to drive for you. Meaning that you gotta have that money on standby to pay them people. Cause I'm sure they're not gonna drive for you for free. And before you actually get to get to the the one driver that may do the damn thing for you, you know, that's uh, that's going to cost money. That's going to cost money because there's many levels to the owner operation game. You know what I'm saying? As far as how long. As far as how long you should drive before choosing an option, I don't know. I, I, I've seen people drive for as long as a couple of years, and then I've seen people that's, that drove for as long as two months, you know? It depends on your ambition on, on, how, on how fast you wanna get into it. Now, do you wanna take the time to learn the business? I, I guess, uh, hmm. I guess if you wanna learn the business until you, you figure out and then you go that route or you just wanna jump into it and then learn as you go. Again, it depends on how serious you're gonna make it. You know, I know drivers that, that, that brought their trucks within a couple of months and they and they doing well they doing well but still it's a learning process and of course you got to learn as you go there you go make sure you got some uh space let me, let me put it to you this way all right let me put it to you this way the successful ones are usually the ones that go above and beyond and finding the black and white rather than being told or hearing it from yahoos in this uh in this youtube space or in the or in the truck stops you know the type of trailer you want to pull what kind of freight you want to you want to target what's the going rate for the lane like i said i don't know about leasing and this owner op thing because i really don't have no aspirations for it you know 
I mean, when I get out of the game, there is a, 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 a business that I'm going to jump back into that I came from. And to let you guys know, I came from the roadside game. You get into any business, any business, not just the trucking business. Well, since we're talking about trucking, this is the business that you're going into. So let's, let's talk about that for a little. You got to learn some accounting. You got to learn the logistics. You got to learn the DOT regulations. You got to learn all of that stuff before you can actually start doing it, you know? You, you got to get some ball, ballpark idea like like DOT, for example, if you get if you get hit with a DOT ticket, how much that ticket gonna cost you, or the logistics, how much the freight play, uh, how much the freight pays. Uh, you got to do some accounting. Now, if you don't know how to do accounting on your own, it's always best to have an outside person to do your accounting, because see, what you're doing, you're you're the driver. You know, you're gonna be stressed out if you got 101 things that you gotta worry about. You gotta, you gotta dedicate that to key people that you trust in your circle. You wanna dedicate somebody to dispatch the freight for you. You wanna dedicate that somebody, you wanna dedicate somebody, what are you doing, Joe? Joe, I left this space so the truckers could turn. You, you, where was I? You got to dedicate uh, uh, the accounting. You got to have somebody real good with numbers, you know, especially if you're not that good. You know, that, I guess that was my problem when I was in business because I was a one man band throughout the whole shebang. I, I did my, my own accounting, my own dispatch. I ran the calls. And sometimes that can that can really run you ragged, though. It, it, it'll it bog you down. So. You know, it's a lot of stuff to consider when, you know, going on a rock. The last thing, no matter what other people say, no matter what people say in general, there's going to always be competition. There's going to be some new jack that's coming in that's trying to outbid you, that's going to try and outweigh you, outdo you. It, 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 and it's and it's gonna make the money it's gonna make the money a little bit more tougher to get believe me I know when I was in the roadside game uh, competition was fast and fierce and in order to play the game and hang with the competition I, I had to I, I had to come down on my rates a little bit you know somebody come into the game saying yo I can do this for five dollars less than what ERS Emergency Road Service could do it for, who do you think the company is going to call? They're not going to call ERS because ERS charge five dollars more for the same call. So, I guess I have to come down and be on that line in order to continue to get in the number of calls I've been getting. Same thing with freight. If somebody charge maybe two cent less or three cent less or four cent less than what you're charging then the company is going to go with that carrier or that driver you want steady customer base that's that's what you're going to get and sometimes just being that nice guy doesn't always win over the customer in actuality you want to give the customer a reason to choose you now I know money that I just mentioned was a big uh, a big deal but if you put the money along with the customer service and the quality of your work then nine times out of ten that company will start I mean will continue to mess with you you know you you do it for five cent less but you give that that quality service and then they you let that company know that El Cheapo is not the way to go man I'm telling you man Florida man t-shirts 
and ooh, hey, hey. Man, t-shirts and tank tops down here, man. That's what's up. Do I want to move down here and live down here? No, I don't think so. And look at this Best Buy over here. You got to make sure that everything, everything, not just the money that you charge, but your professionalism to your equipment and your safety rating. If it, if it wasn't for you guys that, that ask me questions and all like that, the learning never stops. It never does. The learning never stops. And would you guys keep giving me good questions? I'm gonna keep learning more and more as I go. I'm pretty much done. I, I hope this answers your question. I hope it, it helps. I hope it helps somebody else that, that, ans that asks the same question. So I appreciate you guys, I really do. Yo, hook a brother up with some coffee once in a while. You know what I'm saying? You know, the link is in the description and in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, Hit that bell on the way out the door. Lockout man, y'all. I'm here on my way out of Florida, about to head up to Virginia. I'm done talking. I'll get at you in another video. Peace. GoPros. Oh, wait, wait. Should I just say it one at a time? GoPro, turn off. I'm gone, I ain't coming back and You gon' have to settle with another man But when you realize, don't be running back oh, Ain't no sunshine when I'm gone Ain't no sunshine, ain't no sunshine Ain't no sunshine